Hello, Legacy Chapel. I'm here just to give you an encouraging word. I hope you're having a awesome Sunday. These Sundays uh, at the end of every year are pretty neat, uh, taking the Sunday off for all of our volunteers. We have an extraordinary uh, congregation and people that serve. Many people, several times a month, they serve. And so we take time um, to be with our families on this particular Sunday, but I wanted to give you um, some thoughts and ideas, maybe a certain way to pray, and to give you a heads up as we head into the new series that I'll be starting uh, Sunday, January the 5th, when we get back together. Um, so I hope you're having an awesome Sunday. Um, I wanna encourage you as you head into the new year. It's crazy to think that we are embarking on the year 2020. It's amazing. I, I love the symbolism involved with 2020. It's going to kind of set up um, the series that I'm going to be teaching January the 5th in the month of January 2020 or 2020 vision. And I'm going to be teaching on the vision I believe that God has given each of us. Um, I want to give you some things to help maybe unpack your personal vision. Maybe you've never thought about that before. Every believer, God has directed them with some very specific things that he would have them to do. Some of them are common amongst all of us, but some are very unique. And so um, this series is really intended, 2020 vision is the title, is intended to be something to help you unpack that dive in um, devotionally, asking, seeking the Lord on what he has for you in the upcoming year. I'm one, I truly believe that things um, do not happen by accident, they happen on purpose. And I believe that God is purposed in us and has purposes for us in his promises. And those are things that we can go after. And I intend in the series that's coming up um, and in, in today's devotion as well, uh, to help you and pray through those things. So as you're thinking about 2020, I want you and your families, I want to really impress those that have young kids at home or maybe teenagers that you do this together. Um, in the days ahead as you move towards the new year, um, really start praying about um, the new year and what God has for you and your family. Um, talk about what's in your heart. Talk about um, the things that went well. In, in 2019, talk about the things that you're expecting for, you're excited for in the upcoming year of 2020. Uh, maybe describe the, the, if this one thing happened, um, you know, it would, may, everything would change. Your life would change, uh, your relationships would change. What is that one thing? I believe that there's an expectation in our heart uh, as believers that God's put there for us individually. Um, maybe you're expecting uh, to get married. Maybe you're expecting a new relationship or an open door. Um, allow that to kind of set the stage stage for your prayer life and maybe your devotional life. Um, and today I have some stuff that I want to share with you that I think that will help you. And it's this question. Here's the question. Should God be a priority? Uh, it seems maybe weird for me to say that. And you think, well, of course God should be a priority. I want you to think about it differently because I think sometimes priorities, um, we segment or we segregate those things. And often when people think about priorities in the new year, we talk about resolutions, we talk about, you know, what, what am I going to accomplish this year? Unfortunately, when we make God a priority and it becomes simply that, the issue is, is that where does God fit on the list? And for all of the glow-in-the-dark Christians and, and the ones that know the answer, they say, well, God belongs at the top of the list. Well, I want you to think about something maybe differently, that God shouldn't be on the list at all. Often it's, you know, it's God and your relationship with Jesus, and then potentially it's family, and then it's career. The, the issue with it being on a list is that we often um, will move God off of, let's say, a priority for a certain day, and we say, well, now I'm going to focus on my family. I, I don't believe it's God's plan at all for us to set him to the side or, in some instances, set our family to the side or set our career to the side uh, for us to somehow focus on God or focus on our work. So here's what I want to give you. Instead of God being a priority in 2000, uh, or excuse me, in 2020, instead of him being a priority, I believe he should be at the center. Instead of a priority, Jesus should be at the center of everything. So you're not looking to remove, uh, let's say, stop working your job so you can go be devoted to the Lord. I believe that Jesus should be the center of every area of your life, of every, let's say, priority, of every initiative or everything that you're praying for. Jesus should be at the center. Again, it, it creates this idea in prioritization. If you prioritize God, number one, what happens is that he becomes an island. And if you forget about your top priority or you forget about one of those priority, they become islands. And, and they may be noble islands, they may be uh, just islands, but nonetheless, they're islands unto themselves. So I want to really give you 
a mindset about the new year that Jesus is not on my priority list. He's at the center of all that I am. He's at the center of my priorities. And we know from Scripture, I'll give you one here from Colossians chapter 1, in verse 15, we know that Jesus is, is, is superior and supreme, and we often need to be reminded of that as we're, as we're heading into the new year, talking about resolutions and those things. So let me read it for you. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15 says this, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. So we can see that Christ is supreme, he's superior, he's in the middle, he's first place of all things. And that's good for us to hear as Christians. Verse 18 of Colossians 1 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, and that in all things that he may have the preeminence. Verse 19, For it pleased the Father, not in him, all the fullness should dwell, but by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of Jesus Christ. And here is where we see the reminder of Paul in Colossians declaring that, that everything was created for Christ, in Christ, and in our relationship with Him. He is the center. He is number one. So let that be an encouragement to you, that, that He is the center of every believer's life and in every priority, in every initiative that you have, and any prayer list that you have, Jesus is at the center. So I want you to, to, to have that mindset to not put Jesus on the list, but make Him the center of of it all. Think of it maybe this way as an example. Many of you have ridden a bike in your life and you think of a bike wheel and the middle of that wheel uh, um, is the hub of the wheel and from the hub of the wheel are the spokes that go out of the wheel and as the wheel turns the center stays put and nothing is moved Nothing causes the center to move because it's the center. But out of that flows all of the different spokes of the wheel or all of the different areas of your life, the priorities of your life, those become the spokes. But Jesus is the center. He's unchanging. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, he is at the center of it all. And that's how your life should be. So it shouldn't be that there's Jesus and then my family. It's Jesus in my family. It's not Jesus and then my marriage. It's Jesus in my marriage. It's not Jesus and then my career. It's Jesus in my career. That's a really different way to pray. That's a different way to live your life. Um, you know, some people take breaks to go pray, and I'm for that. Or they take breaks and they go do, uh, um, you know, a worship time. I'm for that. But how about putting God in the center of it all? where you're praying underneath your breath in the boardroom, or you're praying while you're writing the email, or maybe you're on a confrontational phone call. You'll have those this year, I'm sure of it. A confrontational phone call where you can pray and say, Holy Spirit, I need you right now. You can do it underneath your breath in the middle of the conversation. That's keeping Jesus at the center of it all. So he's the hub of the wheel. Now, here at the church, what we're going to do on January the 5th is I'm going to introduce uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting to help us with this, with this idea of Jesus being at the center. And what happens in fasting, we know this in Scripture, and, and we've taught this here at Legacy, fasting doesn't change God. Fasting changes us. And the beginning of the new year, again, is always a great time to kind of reset priorities and, and, and refocus on things. And what better way than prayer and fasting, where we take time to remove stuff from the flesh. And some of you will do it different ways. Um, fasting is a removal of something from your life in the natural, where you then devote that time in prayer with the Lord, or, or you just remove it completely from your life. Some people do uh, fast from food or fast from coffee. Um, some people do fast from sugar, uh, fast from bread. And they, when, when they remove that out of their diet, what it does is it creates that, that recognition over the 21 days. That's, that's how long we'll do it as a church, January the 6th through the 26th, um, those weeks of January. What it does is it brings a remembrance of I'm focusing on hearing God. And that's what I want 
want for our church. Listen, we have a lot to pray about uh, in, in, in our church. Our church is growing. We're, we're filling services every week. The kids' services, um, their classrooms are full. And we're praying, we're believing. You know this legacy that we've been praying for the land that's right here next to us to build a building. We have some really strategic things that we need to pray about. Abby and I, on a personal front, we're praying, you know, our little boys are no longer little anymore. They're, they're transitioning from being young boys to teenagers. There, there's a lot of praying going on for Abby and I. Perhaps the same be true for you. Maybe you're transitioning jobs or you're transitioning relationships in some way. Um, maybe you've just moved to town or you're getting ready to move and there's transition that's coming in 2020. Well, those are the paramount times, the prime times that you should be praying and, and asking God, God, come speak to me. I'm ready to listen. I want to hear. And so in the 21 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on Sunday the 5th, this upcoming Sunday, I'm going to bring a prayer card that's uh, specific for our church of things that I know that we should be praying for, the land, expansion, ministries, our impact in the city. We're going to have those things listed. But I want you coming prayed up and ready because on this card is going to be blanks where you're going to write in your number one prayer request, the thing that you're praying about, um, you know, how the Lord could touch and change your life, the things that you are really postured in faith, expectant for God to do. I want us to have these prayer cards. So Sunday, January the 5th, I'll explain it further. We'll go through it together as a church family. Um, but I'm believing both as a church and our individual families that God is going to do some significant things. We, we've said some stuff about 2019 that it was significant in many ways for us, uh, our families and our church. I'm believing that for 2020 on this premise that we will have 2020 vision in the upcoming year. God wants us to, to, to live in clarity. He doesn't want us to be in confusion. He wants us to have great vision about our personal lives, for our families, for our church, and, and that's something that you can have. So we're gonna do this together uh, as a church family. So it's coming. We're gonna talk about a vision in our personal lives, vision in our families, vision in our church and vision in our city. I know that God is doing something significant. You can feel the momentum at Legacy Chapel every single week when we worship, uh, as we open the word and we dive in. There, there is something very special happening at this church. And um, for me, that's extremely exciting. Um, 2020, I believe, will exceed our expectations because we serve a God that constantly exceeds our expectations. So I'm praying for you. I look forward to seeing you uh, on January the 5th, but let me close in prayer. Pray for you and your family on this awesome Sunday. I love you guys, but let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our scripture in Colossians 1. Lord, what you're doing in our lives, speaking to us each day. Lord, we want to make you the center of it all. You're not just a, a, a point of priority, but God, you are the center of all that we do. Lord, I pray for those today watching this video, watching this devotion. Lord, you'd speak to them. Holy Spirit, you'd guide them and direct them in the areas of things that they uh, need to make uh, you the center of. Lord, forgive us for, this, for the life that we've lived that's separate from you. We want to make you the, the, the center of it all, not just a priority, but the center of it all. Lord, I pray you be with their families and their kids a day of rest on this day as we're not together. But God, we know in the coming year, 2020, we're going to have 2020 vision in our personal lives, in our family lives, and in our church. Father, bless them this day in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. I'll see you this coming Sunday, January the 5th. I hope you're having an awesome time with your family, and we'll see you soon.